Now, the rest of the story. It was a standing invitation from the folks. Anytime you're in town, drop by and spend the night. And their daughter, Maureen Ravel, was pleased to accept, even after she married Dennis, and the two of them shared the spare bedroom. But what I'm going to tell you is about one of those visits. Although neither Maureen nor her husband, Dennis, were at all prepared for the rest of the story. The big house where their parents live is always a comfortable overnight stay, particularly because of the oversized bed so conveniently accommodating Dennis's six-foot-seven-inch frame. Well, anyway, he and Maureen were asleep in that bed and her parents in their own room when she was awakened, inexplicably awakened. And then she saw it standing by the window. It was enshrouded by a reddish glow. It did not move, and it appeared impossible as this sounds, to be a transparent person poised in silence. For lack of a better term, a ghost. Maureen started to cry out, but the scream stuck in her throat. Could she be seeing what she saw? Could it be a dream? No, she was utterly unquestionably awake, ice cold and pulse pounding, and then the figure vanished. Of course, falling asleep was almost impossible after that. Whom could she tell who would not laugh? Ought she ever to confide this to anyone? But Maureen decided that she must. And the next morning at breakfast, she told her parents, I think I've seen a ghost. Well, both of them looked at her in astonishment. But she said she was not joking, that she saw what she saw. And what she wanted to know was, who is it? I cannot say whether Maureen's parents believed her, but they did know of a man whose home this used to be, and that the spare bedroom was then his study. Had Maureen been aware of anything else strange in the room? Well, she thought for a moment. She recalled that a painting on one wall was always askew. She often straightened it, only to find it tilted again later. And as she remembered that, Maureen became absolutely convinced that she no longer doubted her senses. Her parents' spare bedroom was haunted. And what could they say, especially when their son-in-law, Dennis Revelle, came downstairs to relate that he had seen something also. The figure of a man, he said, standing beside the fireplace, his hazy form outlined in a deep pink aura. The Revels had both seen him, they insisted. And they were not alone, for other house guests had complained of a thing going bump in the night. Eleanor Roosevelt had once said that she felt a presence in that bedroom. And, and Winston Churchill is said to have seen the specter and the queen of the netherlands the queen of the netherlands once fainted dead away when she answered a knock on the bedroom door one night and she was confronted by a bearded phantom what past house guests by the way these are all white house guests what they may or may not have seen none but themselves can confirm and yet you might be interested to know that the Emancipation Proclamation was also signed in that room. And it was signed by the man Maureen Revelle Reagan. That's right. White House daughter Maureen Reagan. It was signed by the man she is absolutely certain she saw, Abraham Lincoln. Now you know the rest of the story.